Hi and welcome to the fifth part of this tutorial on C-Sharp classes. Before we get into it, please like, subscribe, share, comment, it will be greatly appreciated. And please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content. If you haven't seen the first, second, third and fourth parts of this tutorial on C-Sharp classes, please see links to these videos below in the description and please view these videos before continuing. This is the final part of this tutorial on C-Sharp classes. The next tutorial, the 18th part of this C-Sharp for Beginners course, will be on C-Sharp Inheritance. So let's implement code that will allow a user to update an already existing employee record. The code for this implementation will allow a user to press the U key to indicate the user's intention to update an employee's record. The user will then be prompted to enter an ID of the employee record that the user wishes to update. If the ID is valid, an update screen will be presented to the user. The user will be prompted to update each employee field in the following order. First name, last name, annual salary, gender, and is manager. If the user does not wish to update a particular field, the user is able to press the enter key without updating the relevant field. When all the fields have been traversed, the main screen will be presented to the user. Right, so let's add another class to the views folder in the employee component project. Let's name this class employee update view. Let's create a constructor that accepts one argument an employee's object. Let's ensure that this class contains a using employee component .data directive. Let's create a private field named underscore employees, which is defined as the employees type. Let's implement code in the constructor where the employees object argument is assigned to the underscore employees private member variable. Let's then create a method named runUpdateView. This method is a public method that does not contain any parameters and does not return a value. Let's write text to the screen to prompt the user for the ID of the employee record that the user wishes to update. Let's use the find method, which is a member of the underscore employees object, to find the record pertaining to the ID passed as an argument into the find method. If the return value assigned to the index local variable is not negative one, this means that an employee record containing the ID entered by the user has been found. So let's write an if else statement to implement appropriate code for when the index is not equal to negative one and therefore the relevant employee record exists in the employee's collection. And conversely, the code for when the index is equal to negative one, which means the employee ID entered by the user does not match an employee record within the employee's collection. Let's implement the if part of the if statement first. Let's define variables that correlate to each of the updatable employee properties. We are defining these variables as strings so that the user is able to enter a blank field indicating that the user does not wish to update a particular field. So then let's write code to assign a reference to the relevant employee object in the employee's collection through the index returned by the find method. Note we are able to do this because we implemented indexer code within the employee's class so that it can be indexed as if it were an array. So let's open the employee common output text class and create a static method to return an appropriate heading for the update view. We also want to output some additional instructions to the user. So let's implement another static method in the employee common output text class for this purpose. Okay, so let's write code that prompts the user to update each of the updatable properties of the relevant employee. The user can either input a value to update a field or press enter to leave the field unmodified. And you'll notice that we are including the current field value next to each appropriate field label. 
Once all the fields have been traversed, we can then update the relevant employee record by calling the employees object's update method. And we must pass the employee object that we wish to update, followed by all the updatable fields of the employee object, into the update method. So notice that for all the field arguments that we are passing to the update method, we are using a ternary operator to assess whether a field has been updated. If the field has been updated, we must convert the user input string to its appropriate data type where applicable. If the field was not updated, the current unmodified value is reassigned to the appropriate employee object property value. OK, let's implement the else part of the if statement. And we can simply reuse text already created in the employee common output text class to write to the screen when an employee is not found within the employee's collection. Let's then implement the code that will allow for lazy loading of this employee update view object in our employee object factory class. Let's call the update view code from our main method and let's test the code. Let's press the U key then enter an appropriate ID. So I'm going to press enter without updating the first two fields because we don't want to change this employee's name in the system. Let's say this employee has had an increase in salary, so let's update the annual salary field. And let's press enter for the next two fields to leave the gender and the is manager fields unmodified. And you can see on the main screen that the annual salary is reflected. Great. And let's say Brenda Anderson has just been married, so we wish to update her last name from Anderson to Davis. Great. And let's test what happens if we enter an employee ID that does not exist in the system. And this is an expected result. OK, let's implement the delete function for our CRUD application. So we'll implement code that allows the user to press the D key to indicate that the user wishes to delete an employee record. The application will then respond by prompting the user for the ID of the employee record that the user wishes to delete. If the ID matches an employee record stored in the system, the application prompts the user to press the Y key to confirm the user's intention to delete the relevant employee record from the system. If the user presses the Y key, the relevant employee record is deleted from the system and the main screen immediately reflects this. Right, so let's add a new class to the views folder in our employee component project. Let's name this class employee delete view. Let's make this class a public class. Let's then create a constructor for the employee delete view class that accepts an employee's object as an argument. Let's ensure that this class contains a using employee component.data directive. Let's create a private member variable named underscore employees, which is defined as the employees type. The code within the constructor assigns the employees object passed as an argument to the constructor to the underscore employees private member variable. Let's create a method named run delete view. This method is public, does not contain any parameters, and does not return a value. Let's write the code to prompt the user for the ID of the employee record that the user wishes to delete from the system. Let's pass the entered ID to the find method. 
If the value returned from the employee's object's find method that is assigned to the index integer variable is not negative one, then let's write the code to prompt the user to confirm the user's intention to delete the employee record that contains an ID matching the user's input. Let's implement functionality for when a user presses the Y key, which is confirmation that the user wishes to delete the relevant employee from the employee's collection. And if the index variable is equal to negative one, let's output appropriate text to inform the user that the ID inputted by the user does not match any employee records currently saved to the system. This output is appropriately coded in the else part of the if statement. Right, the next step is to write code to enable the employee delete view object to be lazy loaded. Then let's implement the employee delete view functionality in the main method. Okay, let's test the code. Let's press the D key to run the delete functionality. Let's enter the ID of the employee record we wish to delete. So I'll enter the ID of 2. I'll then press the Y key to confirm my intention to delete the relevant employee record. And we can immediately see that the deleted employee record is no longer displayed in the tabular formatted employee data. Great. So next I'll delete the employee record with an ID of 3. Excellent. And let's test what happens when we enter an ID that does not match any of the employee records currently saved to the system. Great. This video is the final part of this tutorial on C-Sharp classes. The next tutorial, the 18th part of the C-Sharp for Beginners course, will be on C-Sharp Inheritance. In the next tutorial, we are diving deeper into object-oriented principles. Object-oriented programming is a very important coding methodology to learn for C-Sharp developers, as C-Sharp is of course a fully object-oriented programming language. We briefly demonstrated the main differences between classes and structs. We built a very basic CRUD application to demonstrate the use of classes in C-sharp. The application demonstrated how entities like an employee record can be encapsulated within classes. The application demonstrated how classes created at compile time serve as templates for objects that can get instantiated at runtime. Abstracting the construction of objects from classes was demonstrated through the implementation of a factory class. The use of the static keyword in class and method definitions was demonstrated and discussed. A special employees class was implemented to encapsulate the functionality of an inbuilt C Sharp collection type, namely the ArrayList, and how the employees class could be coded to store a collection of employee objects. We demonstrated how we could enable for each functionality for the traversal of the items stored in the employees collection by exposing the getEnumerator method. The application demonstrated how we could enable a class to behave as though it were an array through the implementation of index of functionality. The application demonstrated the use of properties, including auto-implemented properties, parameterless constructors, parameterized constructors, and the use of methods within classes. We briefly discussed and demonstrated two techniques for loading objects, namely eager loading for instantiating objects when the application first loads, and lazy loading for loading objects on demand. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, comment to support the channel 
it will be greatly appreciated and please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content. As always, the code created in this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. Please see a link to the relevant GitHub repository below in the description. Thank you and take care.